So Haruna is one of my favorite coffee shops when I'm in LA. Thank you for inviting me to a brick and mortar to talk about Omnichannel and augmented reality. I'm really excited to be here. Excited myself. You know, what's interesting is when we usually think about omni-channel experiences, we're mostly thinking about digital experiences. But it's really interesting because we now have the ability to change the narrative around gamifying reality. Absolutely. Um, and integrating that into an omni-channel commerce story so you can gamify for your customers um, and engage with them in new ways. Absolutely. What I love about the Square Terminal is it's a hardware device that's ready to accept, you know, payments. Um, what I love is it not only focuses on quick transactions, but also preventing fraud. Um, and what I love is how we can now think about, you know, businesses being able to convert already existing customers into giving them new immersive experiences to experience all the things they already love about a store in completely new ways. Yeah, and like we're proud to have built the hardware that's really slick and that you can use in the sort of off-the-shelf um, variety. But I think what is really exciting is what developers can add on top of that um, with the APIs and SDKs to really integrate. So you're not just saying, hey, we have messaging that's on messaging and social. We have um, in-person, online, and, and mobile payments. Mm -hmm. But we have those orchestrated together to create these new and really special experiences. Yeah, speaking of on top of that, we've actually built a demo that uses augmented reality. And augmented reality simply overlays graphics on top of your real-world reality. Um, what I love about AR is it gives you these new um, you know, trigger points, uh, reality hooks, if you will, to be able to connect you know, anything that you would want together. Um, augmented reality currently exists at the intersection, right? So you have augmented reality and you have virtual reality. And the biggest differentiator between the two is occlusion. Whereas virtual reality occludes your real world, augmented reality simply allows you to experience your new world or your real world in completely new ways but it can exist within different states, right? So we have marker-based AR experiences, markerless experiences, and even geolocation-based experiences. With markerless experiences, you're really waiting on an image to be detected for it to be triggered and then do whatever activity you would want after that. Right. With markerless, you can trigger experiences that use slam detection. So using things like, you know, the LiDAR scanner and the iPhone, you can place objects anywhere. And with geofenced or geolocation-based experiences, you can actually have things pop out based off of the user's fine precision um, of where they actually are using their location. Yeah, I, think, I think another really neat point about augmented reality is that you don't have to go all in necessarily. I mean, you can have a fully augmented reality experience, but many of the ways that it works for sellers, um, it, it can be done partially. Like you can, you can have uh, one more thing um, that delights the seller and their customer um, and creates a really sticky experience. Absolutely, I would agree. I think uh, augmented reality in and of itself creates a space for a business to be able to have a new layer, right? But it's not completely replacing the infrastructure that it has. And in many cases, you know, businesses would like to gamify a specific portion or a specific part of their store, not the whole entire store. And create loyalty, create a feeling that you are a partial owner mm -hmm. of the space. Like in many ways that the traditional jukebox um, gave people control. Like you've shown, are showing us today um, how we can have a virtual jukebox, mm -hmm. how we can have, um, you know, customer control that you interacted with a Square device and shown that you're physically here in person. Mm -hmm. And you can now say control the, 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 the color of the lights, mm -hmm. the, the, the level of the lights, mm -hmm. the, the music, the, the ambiance in your space. Mm -hmm. And then also in your demo showing a poster with um, having that augmented space. Yeah. In that space, you can personalize it to the customer. So mm -hmm. the customer is vegan, they have a vegan menu. The customer is whatever, their preferences, their, their top things that they've ordered in the past. Those are accessible through Square API, mm -hmm. and they're presentable using public APIs from AR platforms. Absolutely, you have that ability for not only brand loyalty, but for brand customization as well, right? Where you can go into a space and through this omni-channel direction, you can actually modify specific things of that store simply by allowing your presence into it, right? You can go into a store and be like, hey, I want to change the theme of the music in the store, or I want to change the theme of the colors in the store, um, or possibly you even want to change what's showing on the TV, right? You have those abilities through these simple web calls. And those interactions don't even have to be human triggered. Like you could have that happen by the, the people in the store right now have each given their music selection. And so now the, the virtual jukebox is going to rotate through them, is going to, like if, if your friends join you, yeah. you can you know, pre press the balance or even, or even things around pricing. I mean, you can have like virtual happy hours mm -hmm. or any type of engagement where the number of people here like create this moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, time and time again, we've seen uh, several AR experiences throughout the years of its evolution. Um, you know, there's been so many different experiences, but I think the ones that will really redefine the possibilities of where the conversations around omni-channel experiences can go to are the ones that have real-world utility. Absolutely.
and, and that, that really give something to the seller and the customer and create that interaction that wouldn't be possible otherwise, that gives it, that elevates it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to that point, I think, you know, speaking of elevation, it's like, I think allowing businesses, um, especially smaller owned businesses, to not have to reconvert, you know, how they price their inventory or how they, how they even scan or tag their inventory um, is a game changer as well, right? Using the power of AR, a business that has, you know, graphic t-shirts can now just use each of those t-shirts as AR markers instead of having to go create a completely new, you know, uh, catalog of items specifically tuned for this using just the terminal API as well as the hardware, you can actually just use the image, you know, uh, recognition abilities of AR and then overlay that on top of whatever item that's in your store and just trigger the checkout. Yeah, and those overlays, like having them be virtual, having or having them be augmented reality, they're not they're not uh, needing to be printed. You're not like you can experiment and yeah. and you can get the data yeah. get, to make metric driven decisions. So your experiments matter um, and can drive your decisions. Yeah, what was interesting is like as we were sort of exploring the developers tools that you guys have, whether through the REST calls or even the SDKs. What was interesting is all the ideas that we thought we could have. We we're like, oh my god, we could like, what could it be if you could have like virtual pricing, right? Where you could just hover your phone over each item and see the price. Of it in real time. Yeah. Um, it's like all these different ways that can assist businesses in improving efficiencies. If you think about a smaller scale business that has, um, you know, limited um, staffing, right? Um, if you have two or three staff and there's like four to five people in there, um, you know, you can't tend to every single person, right? But the ability where, you know, somebody might just have a simple question related to the price of an item. Well, now you can just discover that on your own, right? You can just kind of interact with every single item, holding your phone over it, and as soon as it gets that, you know, that image tracker or that, you know, AR marker, it can actually display that to you. We well, can also think about different ways that augmented reality can assist in accessibility as well, right? You think about somebody that might be, you know, that might have an audio impairment, right? That can now use augmented reality and assistive touch to be able to navigate within a physical space, right? Maybe you might just have the app that you can hold over different things and get an audio feedback related to the pricing of an item or what you might actually even be looking at. Yeah, and these days you're working with really off-the-shelf components like BLE motes and, and the, the mobile phone operating systems that know how to interact with them already. And so it's just about figuring out where you want those triggers to fall inside of your customer mm -hmm. flow. And um, it's, that's why it's really important for us to have all the APIs and to have the interactions with all the first-party products mm -hmm. because developers don't necessarily want to build the entire suite mm -hmm. of tools. They certainly don't want to build hardware yeah. um, and, 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 and go through all that um, regulatory and legal requirements. But using those pieces and being able to start with them as your building blocks mm -hmm. lets you add the one more thing that can really um, make the whole thing work, mm -hmm. that can really add that value. Absolutely. I would even say you know, even more than just starting, there's so much that you can already do with the current existing hardware. Hardware, right? yes. um, we didn't run into any issues, even as we were thinking about the demos or what developers could do in terms of in incorporating augmented reality um, or even using web calls to trigger AR experiences. There's just so much bandwidth, right? Um, there's no limitation. It's up to you, really. The limitation is on how far you want to go, yeah. right? How far you want to create this, you know, custom experience for a retail store. How far do you want to go within sort of this space of gamification? Um, it's going to be limited based off of you know the ideas that you can think of, rather than the hardware itself. Yeah, I think that that's, that lets you experiment and it lets you try things that like it's your it's it's your development time. And but when you've unlocked the thing that does resonate with sellers, yeah. like Square has the millions of sellers for you to put it in front of that thousands of them may be your customers. No, absolutely, it's really great. Like you know, I was having so much fun with just all the different ideas. And I mean, it's like every single problem that's you know you you might have within traditional e-commerce. Um, Using the power of augmented reality and even thinking about it from an omni-channel experience standpoint, you can also provide so many infinite solutions that businesses currently have, right? For example, in the last, I mean, five minutes of our conversation, we touched on sustainability, we talked about accessibility, um, dexterity even. You have all these different things that you can think of, um, giving you know smaller and larger scale businesses a huge advantage um, as the conversations continue to grow, right? Because that's something that happens, especially with not only a lot of developers, but also, you know, companies that create amazing hardware, right? You're always focusing on the next iteration, right? What's the next, what's the equivalent of hardware 2.0 and 3.0 and 4.0? But using augmented reality, you actually have the ability to keep the hardware consistent and just have new updates to the software ecosystem and the possibilities. Yeah, and you can you can swap out either the AR portion or the hardware portion and continue making the rest calls. You know, yeah. so it's like as we as there's the you know future 
uh, hardware, mm -hmm. it, to be able to use that and then continue iterating on both hardware and software. Mm -hmm. And having that experience go back and forth, I think is really powerful too. A lot I mean, of people, yeah. Yeah, and it's also like true interoperability, right? Um, despite the, you know, the, the Square Terminal uh, having a huge focus on emphasis on payments, yeah. you can also use it for all these other omnichannel experiences as well. For example, within the demo, we actually incorporated um, Tidal Web right directly into the app. So you can actually walk into a store and control the whole entire playlist of the store similar to a jukebox back in the day. Yeah, 100%. And 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 being able to control your space like is is really a great thing for customers. Um, and it helps develop loyalty, it helps like develop appreciation for that shared space. Mm. I think to um, you know, something that's really important for us to touch on is the ability for us to now invoke multiple levels of contactless, right? Because we have contactless payments. That's associated, you know, we, we hear that a lot, especially as we talk about omni-channel and mm -hmm. physical and digital and even digital. But what could we have, what could it mean for us to have contactless immersive experiences, right? Where I could go to a store and might not have to touch anything, but I can just hover my device over anything in that store to, you know, get a visual cue or a prompt. Yeah, absolutely, and and also even things that you aren't prompted into, but your mere presence like helps inform the environment, um, helps inform the pricing. It's really it's up to your imagination to figure out how it works and how it will delight um, both the sellers and their customers. Mm -hmm. And speaking of you know customers, and as well, as well as when I think about developers building for customers, you know developers are kind of always caught within sort of this space where it's like, well, how do I build on for augmented reality experiences? And a lot of developers, you know don't actually realize that there are, you know, a lot of tools that you can actually use, like, you know, Apple's Reality Composer, as well as Reality Converter, as well as AR Kit, right, and AR Core, which are available for both Google and Android. AR Core being for Google and AR Kit being for iOS right. that allow you to create these immersive AR experiences that are compatible with pretty much every device that runs the internet. Yeah, and they're compatible with all the Square devices, the Square APIs, and that's what's really exciting to us is that these off-the-shelf components can be right now integrated Absolutely. I mean, for people to really see the tangibility and the, you know, just amazingness of what augmented reality as well as omni-channel experiences can represent, it needs to be tied to real-world utility and real-world value, right? We can kind of have things pop out any, you know, any day of the week, <laughs> right? But being able to sit within this real store, right, that has real customers um, and provide them a real experience at its core, it's, it's just so amazing. It is, and the, it's, it's important for it to be deeply integrated, for it to really work. Like, it, you don't want to have it be this take it offline, follow instructions. It, it needs to be seamless. Mm -hmm. And I think you really showed a great example of that um, in, your in your work where it, it just flows from the natural experience that mm -hmm. these, these one more thing options mm -hmm. become available and that the folk who want to dip into it can be part of, of something special, mm -hmm. um, can take the off-menu item, can be part of this going from virtual to physical to augmented to physical to mobile to web, yeah, and, and interoperability, interoperability, you know? <laughs> and seamless interoperability, interoperability that happens in a really tight space where you're not having a separate mobile experience and a separate physical experience, where the brick and mortar incorporates mm. this back and forth between the physical device, between the the, the mobile phone that the that mm. the customer has, yeah. and between the things that the store can integrate into their into their mm. real brick and mortar space. Yeah, it's really cool. We were pondering on this idea around like what could it mean for sort of like. Through the you know the, the hardware that Square provides, it allows stores to really be like a phone, and then you have these infinite experiences that can exist in the store that can be your apps. It's like imagine a store being able to pull a software update, yeah, right, on the experiences that it offers. Like, really cool. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And to be able to come to a store for their V3.2 opening, <laughs> uh, right, that's so cool. Yeah, it's like it completely changes how we think about software, um, and it gives. You know, businesses an advantage um, that they've never been able to, you know, have before through sort of this, what you had said, you know, with this deep integration and deep linking of hardware and software. Yeah, and and that seamless experience where you're hopping back and forth in a way that's really not, it's not forced, and and it really exposes this control and this customization that would not be traditionally possible. Yeah, it's a choice, and I, I love what you had said earlier around, you know, um, augmented reality in many cases, should just be a simple portion of the app, right? right? Um, which is why I love it, right? Because it doesn't take you away from your reality, and also doesn't force you to have to, you know, hard code your reality, right? Um, and that's the beauty of it, that uh, not only developers, but also um, your audience base can choose when they would like to tap into those experiences. And if they simply just wanted to go grab a coffee, they could, right? But if they wanted to access that secret menu or that one more thing, 
they also could have that ability as well. Absolutely, and, and sellers don't necessarily want to go and do this themselves, you know, but developers can unlock this for a whole bunch of sellers. And sellers are going to need a wide variety of augmented spaces. Mm. Um, they're going to need a whole bunch of functionality, some of which will go across different types of businesses, some of which will be very tailored to the business's specific needs. Mm. Like how in a tuxedo shop does this function? How in a hair salon does this mm. function? But other things can be used across retail. And so I think that's a wide open space for developers to really dip into and come up with some pretty wowing um, combinations uh, where you're, you're moving messaging, inventory, timesheets, yeah. whatever it is about your business, yeah. you're moving it forward. Speaking of wowing experiences, I actually put together a demo and I'll really have to show it to you. I want to see it. All right, cool. So we actually just made this payment using the terminal hardware as it is, right? What's really cool is using the power of augmented reality in the demo, we can actually use augmented reality to trigger a complete checkout experience where we can actually buy a couple more things. I'd love to see it. Yeah, so let's see, you know, I'm just going ahead and launch the app. And what's cool is once I scan it here, I unlock a variety of different options, right? I can explore the shop, um, discover some of the playlists that Haroon has to offer, as well as augment the reality. Now, what's interesting about the shop is, even though we use this menu to buy you know, food items, yeah. uh, Haroon is also about arts and culture, right? So we can explore some of the you know, clothing items that they also have to offer as well. Before we do that, let's just go to discovering the playlist that they have to offer here. And um, just using some simple web generics, we're able to you know, tap into title and filter some playlists. And we can tap on any of these to immediately start playing. I love it. Let's return back to the app. These are some of the items that they have that are currently being offered for sale. Oh, I kind of wow. like that for a shirt, right? Absolutely. I see you're using Afterpay. So what do you use to implement this? It's actually real seamless and simple. We're just using the Web Payments SDK. Awesome. So let's go ahead and buy the shirt here. We simply just click Buy, and boom. Oh, cool. So you're actually pushing from Web Payments SDK to the terminal for an in-person payment. Absolutely. Very interesting integration. Yeah. Yeah, it gives you some actual advantages too because you're getting um, a card present payment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's uh, go ahead and complete the payment. Just tap twice to initiate Apple Pay. Select the card. And boom. Perfect. Amazing. So you went from physical device to triggering your phone to selecting a virtual device, and then we can then pick it up here in the store. Absolutely. And what's interesting is you know how using augmented reality slow down the process, right? It was quick, it was effective, and it was simple. Right, so I'm actually gonna choose no receipt. Okay. Sustainable. And the item should be coming with some. So let's get something with that donut we just ordered. Absolutely. So Jeroen has this amazing menu, right? But we were thinking, well, what could it mean where we could use the Web Payments SDK plus the terminal device to create a new secret menu? Okay. And yes, it would be cool to put the secret menu somewhere hidden in the store, but what if we use the power of augmented reality to do it? And so if you look at the logo up here, um, for most people, it would look like a normal logo. But using the power of augmented reality, we can actually use this logo as the image tracker nice. to initiate a payment. So if we step over here, and using the demo app we built, we just hover the device over it, we would see the coffee actually pop up, but we would also see this button to be able to buy this secret item, this Haroon secret spiced coffee, um, using the Web Payments SDK. If I just tap on it, boom, it initiates it on the terminal. All I, all I have to do now is just get close to the terminal, and it would bring up all my cards in my Apple Pay wallet, initiate, and just pay for it. Love it. And so you queued this, not to a QR code, but you queued it to an image. Yeah. So like theoretically, you could gamify the entire coffee shop yeah. and make the plants purchasable or provide a secret unlock for other secret items, mm -hmm. scan the art, the art is purchasable, or whatever you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's super cool about it is how it plays into this theme of sustainability, right? Yeah. Where we can have just one item that's rekeyed every single time that the store wants to change, you know, a new secret item or possibly an experience, right? Um, that the audience can you know, change. So it's up to developers to unlock that ability for the sellers. So to give them the tools so they can pick the items 2D or 3D that they want to be able to trigger and then they can have that experience for their customers. Absolutely. That was cool, right? Very cool. Cool. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, thank you so much for showing us those demos. I think it is really powerful to see how you can just add augmented reality to enhance the experience and, and interweave it into a natural customer-seller uh, inter interaction. Absolutely. I mean, in summary, we discovered the playlist that Haroon has to offer using the terminal device. And we also had the opportunity to, you know, order something off the secret menu. And I even got a chance to get a shirt. <laughs> thank you. It's really cool. I like it a lot. And I, I like how the, like having something that you order, like being able to order the shirt where we're physically here present. We, you interact with a hardware device. You interact with your phone being triggered from that device and then physically get delivered a thing in space. I think that is really a powerful part of Omnichannel. Yeah, it also shows developers the ability for us to use augmented reality, which is a digital medium, to have real world effects. Another thing that we could do with Terminal is uh, be able to like, have actual like monitors like play into the when you're having these interactions like have yeah. other like things in the in the store happen yeah. i think that that and also like not having people uh, not have to do anything yeah. like it's, it's like being just like yeah just like walking into the space yeah. what i really love too is like how we can um, using the device you can actually each device has its own id Right, so you can have different checkouts that need to correspond to different terminals. And then, and then like lights behind them or something that your phone is going to see, like the color that you need to walk to, because that's yours interaction, and like they all are, are orchestrating. Yeah. You're almost yeah. moving your audience yeah. around your store. Yeah. You know, come I mean, to this section to mm -hmm. trigger this event. Yeah, I mean, this is the most amazing part about, you know, sort of just augmented reality, that it brings developers together in this really exciting way where it's like, what can't we do? Right? It's like, we can do this, we can do that, we can like explore how we can trigger this and how we can have this output. It's just, it's just so awesome. Well, thanks again for showing us um, and architecting this experience, uh, making it real, um, using augmented reality, using Square APIs, and uh, providing a, uni a unique experience that sellers can provide to their customers. And this was amazing. Looking forward to doing some more. Cheers. Cheers.